Prescribed fire is a management tool that we use in the southeastern United States to restore ecosystem types and also to manage habitat for wildlife. Uh, we can do prescribed burning and scarify the seed of many plants that are adapted to fire. These plants are very good wildlife food plants, many of them like the legumes and the native grasses. So we, we can stimulate herbaceous cover for wildlife by prescribed burning. Selected plants are adapted to fire and they occur in fire adapted ecosystems and those ecosystems are called pyric, P-Y-R-I-C. And this means that the species that inhabit these burn adapted ecosystems are adapted to the disturbance of fire. So several things happen with burning. First of all, we, we definitely get some response by plants, plants like pine and the thick barked oaks like post and blackjack oak and then turkey oak and bluejack oak in the south, uh, southern part of Mississippi are adapted to fire because they have very thick layered bark. And so this allows fire to even travel up the trunk without killing the tree. So fire stimulates their seed production in many cases, in the case of pine, and does not damage the tree. Now, if the pines are very young, like short leaf and, and loblolly, it will top kill them, but the older trees are not damaged. Another thing that happens with prescribed burning is we get the exposure of mineral soil in many cases, and then we get a rapid turnover of nutrients. So what we end up with is a turnover of the organic matter that would normally decay very slow and create a humus layer and we get the recycling of those nutrients really quickly. So we get a surge of things like phosphorus. Uh, some of our nitrogen is lost through uh, gas exchange but we also get a buildup of things like potassium. There does need to be care taken with, uh, taken with too frequent burning in that we can acidify soil if we have acid soil conditions. We don't run into that as a problem on prairie soils, which are very basic and alkaline in nature. So, scarification of seed, including pine and legume seed, one factor that stimulates food plants for wildlife, Creation of mineral soil exposure, which is needed for many plants like the desmodiums and many of the annual plants like ragweed to sprout and go through their life cycle. They need that bare soil contact. And then a quick flush of recycling of nutrients. So what we have here is the burn duff. This is going to be with rain filtered into the, the soil. This is really a good burn condition right here because we have a mixture of mineral soil. We have some burned layer, which is a rapid nutrient cycling into the soil. And then the good thing about this is we have some humus material that was not burned up. And so a lot of times what we will try to do for wildlife is we will try to burn at a time when the fuel moisture is high so that we don't burn all of our existing top layer of organic matter because we do want some of that because that buffers our soil against uh, acid pH changes and allows slow release or really time release nutrients to the soil so that plants can continue to grow over a long growing season period. Period. The other thing we don't want on the forest floor, if we're interested in small mammals, many invertebrates and uh, herpetofauna, is we really don't want to burn up all of our quartz woody debris. I grew up calling these sticks and I used to get paid to pick them up when dad was trying to get rid of me. Now I know sticks and fallen logs and limbs are very important habitat for many different invertebrates that things like black bears eat. Uh, they're also very good cover for uh, frogs, salamanders, and many different kinds of lizards. And so very important to keep some of this coarse woody debris to keep your forest healthy. So right now we're in a pine stand 
It has some interspersion of uh, blackjack and post oak, and this was burned during March. And so this would be considered, at the time it was burned, a growing season burn, after things had sprouted up. And when we burn during the growing season, we have a tendency to top kill uh, our woody plants. And so what you can see is this is more open. Uh, you'll get a flush, if the, if the canopy is thin enough, you'll get a flush of herbaceous cover in here. Many of the plants that'll come up after the fire will be good wildlife food plants, especially for quail and rabbits. Morning doves will use this kind of habitat as well. And many of our different kinds of non-game sparrows. <music>